you've landed inside the bubble with Harley G, a podcast for the superwoman. I am a mother, wife, and ambitious career woman who realized one day that part of me was unfulfilled. I launched this platform to help other women discover and walk in their ultimate purpose through shared stories of trials, fear, dreams, courage, grief, and triumph. No matter who you are or where you're from, there's purpose in your story. Insiders, Inside the Bubble with Harley G is sponsored by BetterHelp. As a partner of this episode, listeners can access the BetterHelp link located in the show notes to receive 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp and get matched with a therapist who will listen and help. Therapy has been such an integral part of my purpose journey and I'm sure it will benefit your journey as well. Go to BetterHelp. That is betterhelp.com slash inside the bubble to get started. This episode is also brought to you by Farmers Insurance. When was the last time you reviewed your insurance policy? Like who, 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 who does that? Or when was the last time you could call your insurance agent directly with an emergency? Well, I was actually able to do that. Two years ago, my garage caught on fire and I was able to pick up the phone and talk to the one and only Austin Brummett on the phone immediately. There's nothing like peace of mind knowing that you are talking directly to the agent. So my friends at the Austin Brummett Agency would love to hear from you and provide you with the same amazing service that they provided me. Give them a call at 678 402 8262 or email them at abrummit at farmersagent.com. Lastly, are you thinking about buying a car but dreading the process? I will tell you that's why I have a husband so he can handle all of that. But Car Official is changing the game. Car Official believes the car buying process should be transparent, informative, and even wait for it, enjoyable. Their experts are here to guide you, provide you with clear information and honest advice. No fancy jargon, no pressure, just a helping hand every step of the way. Whether it's understanding your financing options, getting clarity on fees, or simply finding the perfect car for your needs, they've got you covered. Visit them today and see the difference for yourself at 770. 727-4296 627-4296 or at www.carofficial.net. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Inside the Bubble with Harley G. So excited today. So whether you are catching this podcast and it's your first time listening or you are a regular, I admire you, I love you, I thank you for being here. And this series, we are focusing on speaking to individuals and really hearing about their journey through purpose and faith and how that has impacted them. And so today, I have the amazing, the fabulous um, Angel Creighton. And w- how I met Angel is, um, first of all, we have a passion for high heels, okay? It's it's all about that life. We're all about that life. If y'all could see make sure you check out her shoes in the video. And um, we met years and years and years ago at a volunteer event at um, back in our Turner days. And we have like been locked in ever since. Like we've gone on to different things and like every once in a while I'll be like, "Mm, mm, Angel, what you doing? So I appreciate the longevity of our friendship and how you were able to be here today. So thank you so much. I am honored to be here. Thank you for having me. And this woman is such a boss. Such She's talking about, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to quit the boss life. Okay, good luck with that. Um, and she is fabulous, amazing. So, Angel, tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do. I am Angel Creighton. Um, I was born and raised in Atlanta. I didn't even know that. No. I'm always oh, okay. Southwest Atlanta all day. Oh, snap. Every day. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, I have always been 
a person who lends acts of service. That's my love language. And um, who Angel is, is actually that. I am passionate about people, um, purpose, and progressing people through their journey through whatever that is. I have been many of things um, from customer service to executive assistant to now running my own brokerage. Um, and so I am in the real estate industry. Um, I am a coach. I'm a mentor. I'm a broker. Um, I own my own office. And so many hats. Many hats. I'm also a mother and an auntie. I was going to say, we can't forget about that. Oh, no, yes. absolutely not. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm, an, I'm a mother and an auntie, a big sister, and a great friend, I think. I hope. That You're like, I hope. <laughs> I have some great friends, so. Absolutely. Well, I don't see how you could not. But, um, and so, yes, and because this podcast is for the superwoman. And when I think of super, super women, you know, you also come to mind because you are all of these things that you mentioned and so much more as well. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, you have a little niece and you took her to gymnastics every single week, uh, bought her in. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And it wasn't close to where you live either. It no. was a hike. Yes. It yes. was at least a 50 minute drive. 50, five zero, not 15, mm -hmm. 50. Okay. So like, uh, she takes her, her auntie duties real seriously, but, um, I think even when we met, you were still, maybe you were going into real estate or you had just started. Do you remember like at what point you were at that time? Yes. So I have been licensed in real estate since March of 2007. Okay. I yeah, was so a, you were well into it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I was a dual, what we call a dual career agent. I worked full time. You had two full time jobs. There is nothing part time about real estate. And so I worked in corporate America. I was a single mom and I worked real estate. And so I was dual career up until 2015, 2015. So from 2007 to 20, 2015 dual career. And, um, in 2015, after being laid off, you know, we were caught in the 2020, 2020 of Turner 2020, world. 2020, yeah. um, and I thought my world, my life was going to end, not we end, was gonna but it was, Die. Fall apart. Yes. And yes. that was the second fall apart because <laughs> really? I was, yeah. Yeah. Because you, before that you were somewhere for a while. Yes. I was in the financial industry. I worked for Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. I had my series six and 63, my seven. And so I was a regional sales associate for financial planning, Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. And, um, the first time I was laid off was in 2009 which led me to Turner. And so, um, so then Turner 2020 happened and I got laid off again. So, um, one too many layoffs. <laughs> See, listen. One too many layoffs. Mm -hmm. And I heard God say real estate. And I was like, you talking to me? He wasn't talking to me. Cause God, I could just imagine y'all talks. Oh yeah. Discussions. Yeah. I was like, this is Angel Dion Creighton. <laughs> Let's the whole name. It, right. Let's not get it confused, <laughs> confused with anybody else. else. And, um, and yes, I heard real estate and that kind of embarked me into going into real estate full time. Not willingly. I can't even lie. Mm -mm. Why? I was dragging, kicking this. I quit every day. <laughs> um, I still quit <laughs> every day, weekly, <clears throat> but nothing ever settles right in my spirit when I even have that conversation. So it's a going joke. I know I'm not going anywhere, um, but I love it. Um, the same thing that gets on my nerves. Um, I go home and I have a nice glass of vino and I get up and I start all over again with the same passion, the same drive, um, because it is something about not just helping the buyer or the seller, but also the agents. And so I want to make sure that I'm pouring back into our industry to give those individuals who wish to be successful in this area that they have the right tools and integrity and best business practices. So that's why I do it. Why do you think you were given this purpose? I don't know, man. I listen, when I get to heaven, <laughs> y'all don't have a talk. I got questions. I got questions when I get there. I can stand outside the pearly gates. <laughs> 
And then when I get all my answers, now will you let me in? And I'm not questioning why he did it. I just need the rationale, like why me? You know, um, but then why not me? Right, why not me? Um, <clears throat> I often wonder how was I chosen to do this? Um, and in that many cases, I'm glad I was. I'm glad I was. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Do you feel like you ever got to a point where you just like, okay, that's it. I'm throwing the towel in. We're done. Oh, last week, <gasps> last month, mm. in October last year, mm. I was just tired. Mm. I was just tired. Um, I was just having a conversation with someone. I just feel like um, the world we live in now has lost its compassion for people. And we got to get back to that. And um, it it it's it makes you weary. Mm -hmm. um, it's always having to um, cater to other people, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes catering to other people is a good thing. But when it's not in the best interest of others, like us helping each other out, I feel like we've lost that. Um, and so, yes, I on a regular basis. So why not you? Yeah, why not me? Cause it could have been anybody else, and I would have been okay. <laughs> would you know? Would listen, you have been okay? I think mm. I listen. When you get to this curvy number in age, first of all, this curvy number. Okay, all right, we're gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll with it just for today. Okay, five is curvy. Think about it. It is. So instead of saying fifty, mm -hmm. the curvy number, the curvy number. Okay. When you get to this curvy number in I'm age, adopt that. Yeah. Okay. Things look a little different from up here. Okay. And um, so why not me? Um, I think that everything that I have gone through, every experience, every job, every hurdle, um, when the storm has been raging, uh, has equipped me for the journey that I'm on. Because it's definitely a journey. Um, it is a place of resilience. I think resilience is a journey. And we have moments where the resiliency shines a little bit brighter than other moments. <clears throat> so I've embraced that. God has been speaking to me um, in that way. Um, and then I, I realized too that everything is not about me that happens. God allows things to happen. And there are things that happen to us for the sake of something else. And so I've learned to take a deep breath and say, it's not about me, this is not my moment, but I'm being used. And who doesn't want to be used by God? Can I un answer that honestly? Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, no. Mm -mm. I want to be used. Use me. No, no, use me. That means I'm always on his mind. And, I'm, and he always has his hands on me. So yes, I'm okay with that. When was the time that you felt like you might have thought, okay, this is this experience, what I'm going through, it's me. But then you realize, no, this is actually not about me. Oh, I'm going through that right now. In the midst of, in the eye of the storm, there's peace. That's what gets me through daily. Um, but I am the in the middle of that right now in my career, uh, breaking off and starting my own brokerage. I was into a franchise and it has... Yeah, been, yes, it has been, um, the storm of life is raging <laughs> all around me, but I'm in the eye of the storm where there's peace. So what's keeping you in that peace? What's keeping you grounded? Ooh, a lot of prayer. Good friends. I have amazing friends. I have amazing friends. You are not going to make me cry. Um, and the fact that I know there are people who are tied to my dreams. They can't reach their dreams and their goals if I don't reach mine. And so that gives me the motivation and the inspiration to do it. I cannot fail. Um, this was not an idea that I had because last year I could have gone back to corporate America, got benefits in retirement. <laughs> collect a check and go home every day. <laughs> and um, 
in making the decision to launch my own brokerage. That was the only thing that felt right in my spirit. Um, it has the all, it has been the only decision that has gone well, where there may be a storm raging all around me. It's not my storm. Um, and so I, I keep moving towards the greater because there are other people who are depending on me to make it. And so I have to, and I can't fail. Yeah, the vision was not mine. It was placed in me. And so I know that I'll, I'll come out of this successfully. And that's the best revenge. So I want to hear from you. What does faith mean to you? Oh, faith is, oh my God, um, walking blindly. Imagine being in a dark room. You can't even see the hand in front of your face, but you're moving through that darkness, knowing that I can find the light to get out. That's what faith is. Truly moving through not knowing because God doesn't always give us the answer. Most oftentimes we want the end. Just give me, just give just me a picture. The end result. So yes. let me, let me, I, I let need me to know if I'm going to make it. Right. Then I can, he's like, no, you don't need to know that. But I really do like, no, like you're arguing with him, telling him like, you know, better. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like just show me a glimpse of the end and then bring me back to the beginning and I can go through it. Right. But oftentimes that he wants you to trust the end even when you don't know what it looks like you just know that there's a victory there so that's faith moving through knowing <clears throat> regardless of excuse me <clears throat> regardless of everything that's happening around you but knowing that there is success around a corner you don't know which corner but there's success somewhere and along the way you're going to experience things that don't feel so comfortable, but the discomfort is going to stretch you to give you everything you need to make it through. And so that's where I am right now in this moment. That's where I am. This is so crazy. My makeup artist, Kamaris Jones, <laughs> um, she, um, her ministry is in beauty and, and she is a gorgeous individual. And so every time I go and sit in her chair, we know what's about to happen. Like God is about to, do, God is about to God, you know? Um, and we were talking, I had to go to her yesterday and I had to go to her today. And we were talking about purpose and faith and how she had recently came across a message that said, you have to be comfortable in the you have to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. Yes. And I'm in the process of going, I'm in the process of listening to that message now, but also walking in that journey. Yes. And it's like you said, he's asking me to have blind faith right now. And I'm sitting here like, it's coming. I'm telling myself, yeah, it's right around the corner. It's coming. But like you said, something that just hit me right now is I don't know which corner. So I don't know which corner I'm going to make it to. It sounds like it's near, but it might not be. Right. And that's what I'm starting to realize. Right. And you're a runner. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. you just try I'm to. I'm a sprinter. A sprinter. Okay. We, we, that long distance stuff we don't do. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you're looking for the next marker. Yes. And the next marker. Faith is not knowing what those markers are. <laughs> but getting to them. You always get to them, right? You do but you don't know where they are and when they're coming, how far away you are from them. Cause oftentimes when you're exercising mm -hmm. and your, your trainer says, Oh, do 10, you get to seven. You can, you have a number though, right? You have an indication as to when it's going to end. So that actually, that's actually motivation for you to go hard in the paint. Cause you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly. But moving through without that. You don't have a light. I don't have a light right now but you're going to make it. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe they, because they is always right. 
<clears throat> whenever you're having a conversation, well, they said, uh -huh, and their uh -huh. word is always right. So believe in that and their word. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. All right. Let that be. This is, this was my lesson. This was my, my message. Thank you. For of that. course. Absolutely. But, um, how did you discover your purpose? Everything that I've done for as long as I can remember has been around acts of service. It has been around helping others. Um, at one point in time in my life, I was an LPN and phlebotomist. Okay, stop. Stop right there, Liz. <laughs> Ma'am, you yeah. are what now? I was an LPN and phlebotomist. That what made you want to do that? Well, my mom, my grandmother was a caregiver. Uh-huh. Um, she was an in-home nurse. And my aunt was going to school to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so it just felt like the next best thing. And I used to oftentimes make money with my grandmother by helping her with her patients. And so I went to school and I became an LPN phlebotomist. I worked in an OBGYN practice. I worked in occupational medicine for a while. Um, and I thought that was gonna be my life. L let me tell you, nine lives, I've had at least seven. <laughs> I know I've had at least seven of them, uh -huh. if I were to go back and count. Um, and then, so everything that I've done, when I look back over the things that I've done throughout life has always been about helping people. And real estate is one of those things that is helping buyers, sellers, investors, developers, because now I'm into development. And the agents that I come in contact with, you know, coaching and mentoring, and making sure that they reach their their dreams. So yeah, it's all it's always been about helping people. I can't get away from people. <laughs> oh. Oh. I can't get away from people. Wow. Okay. So you have this purpose of helping people, um, and this is like like you're not just helping people. Well, you are helping people, but in in some instances, you're helping them towards one of the biggest things they will ever have to do in life yes one of their or owning or whatever whatever that looks like yes yeah yeah i mean when you think about uh comprehensive planning um and even being in the financial planning industry or whatever you can't have a comprehensive plan without real estate in it if you choose to own real estate whether that's land or otherwise and um so being knowledgeable being able to educate them through the process not just here do this right but educating them through the home buying or the selling process or whatever it is that they're aspiring to do with real estate um it's what people say invest in god is not making no more land so we got what we got you better buy some right, right. and right. and invest so um it is a huge part of and so having to gain their trust but it's all about relationships everything that we do is about relationships oh my gosh i know somebody who says that all the time yes it's all about relationships all about relationships and cultivating those relationships and it may be someone who you met years ago reconnect at gymnastics mm -hmm. and moving forward and here we are you know um you may have a pause in that relationship or a gap but the relationship is always strong it's always there you know that that person is always willing to help and that goes both ways so yeah it's all about relationships and that is how you gain the ultimate trust of people especially with a huge investment like that Wow, um, you know the relationship part. It like that—that's kind of like my jam. So, mm -hmm. I I love to hear that. Now, ever since I have known you, like I I just have this expectation of how you're gonna show up, how you're gonna be. Like, I'm like, Angel's gonna walk in here and she's gonna be the boss. Like, she's gonna come in, she's gonna bring that energy. That's just what I identify with you. So. Absolutely amazing. I was like, this outfit was inspired by you. Just, just want to let you know. Yes, it was. Absolutely. But anyways, um, so how does your faith impact the way you show up? Ooh, um, 
<laughs> oftentimes we don't always feel like how we look. And I think that is a part of faith. Um, but I always, if you feel, if you look good, you feel good. Um, and I take that very seriously. Yes, you do. <laughs> All the way down to my undergarments. Um, nobody knows it but me. Nice. But I'll, I'll walk a little differently when they're, oh yeah. When, you know, yeah. my back is straight, my head is real. It's probably because I got on some new ones. So um, or the color is just like flowing with the, right. But no, nobody has, that. but nobody knows that. <laughs> but yes, you know, um, and so it starts from getting dressed. It starts from stepping out of the shower, whatever fragrance of perfume that you put on, whatever your undergarments look like and then it goes to whatever I'm putting on for the day so um when I tend to not feel how I'm looking on the outside that is how I make up for it um go a little bit extra the hair might be a little different I might put on lashes that day mm -hmm. if my allergies are cooperating mm -hmm. um, so just going that extra mile and making sure that when I walk out the door and I pull out of the driveway, anything that I'm feeling or not feeling is not directly affected by who I'm going to come in contact with because they may need you. And so I can't carry whatever I'm feeling with me into that situation, into that room. And when I walk into the room, I want to be that person that says, who is that? I need to know her. That's the energy that I bring. So any event that I go to, I always have three things that I must do. Um, how many people do I plan to, how many contacts do I plan to walk away with? Okay. Okay. And if I usually set a number and usually it's on my calendar, right? So I know that this is coming up ahead of time. So I'm already thinking about things before that event happens. I want to walk away with three viable contacts. Okay. Doesn't matter how they're going to fit into my life. I just want three viable contacts from that. That means I might have to talk to 30 people. That means I can't be a wallflower and fade into the background. That means I got to have conversations that are engaging. That means I have to set an expectation. Hey, can I get on your calendar and let's have a conversation? How are you doing uh, next Thursday or Friday? What time works best for you, morning or afternoon? Put that on my calendar. I live by my calendar. Those are intentional because one of the things that we lack is the ability to follow up. And so when you set that expectation, you put it on your calendar and you go, that's another relationship that you're cultivating and you don't know how, you don't have to know how or why or when that person is going to play a part in or when you're going to play a part in whatever that they need. Definitely. You are schooling. You are schooling. Um, you're schooling us right now because the way you you're setting this up to be an expectation. So like, um, and it's you know when you were talking, I was like, you, yeah, I'm a social person. I will go in a room and I will connect. Like I I I understand that energy because I'm right there. But the intentionality that you add behind that is what sets you apart. Yes, absolutely. I don't do business cards anymore. Okay. I have my phone. Mm -hmm. Hey, put your number in here. Mm -hmm. That way I have captured their name, phone number, and many times an email address. Oh, got it. And set an expectation. That's a viable contact. Not just handing out business cards. They end up in the trash. We waste way too money on them. Um, but being intentional, having that conversation, that engagement, finding out, how you can be of value. Stop looking for it so, coming to you. Exactly. Even if it's not reciprocated, you never know how that relationship is going, how God is going to use that relationship in the future. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I always do throughout when I'm meeting new people and connect with them, I ask them, what can I do for you? Uh, what's something that I can help you with? Um, so, because like you said, it's about what I can bring to the table for them. And like you said, it, I did my job. I did my part. God told me to show up. I showed up. I had a conversation with this person. The rest is up to you, homie. Like, what you going to do? Right? Um, but like you said, the follow-up. But I love, love, love what you said about 
how you prepare going into it, being intentional, saying, okay, I'm going to come up, I'm going to have three contacts. Like that, is, I, it's a simple thing. Right. It really is. But, you know, I am i don't know, that nugget just kind of really resonated with me. Always, always set that a mindset. And that right there um, controls the energy on how you show up in a room. Um, I don't have to be the one that everybody looks at when I walk in the room, but I want to be the one that everybody wants to get to know. And so carrying that energy with me um, and me looking around the room, who is it that I need to come in contact with? Because there's a prayer before that I've said before I walk into that place, God, please direct my path and allow people that I need to come in contact with to implement a dream, right? He gives us a dream, he gives us a vision, but do we always know how to implement that? And then do we always know, always know the resources and resources can be people. So I pray, God, please allow me to cross the paths with people that I can trust, who are kind hearted and who have good intentions. So I'm always, who do I need to be paying attention to? And I have a really good discernment of people and can read energy. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So like, and, and we see the faith, the preparation, the, you know, how you show up intention, like all of that, um, is in that experience, that story. So thank you for that. Um, when was the time you felt that you really struggled with your faith? My sister passed away. She's younger than me. And, um, all the things, grief. <laughs> grief has no timeline, nor did it ha does it have a rhyme or reason or an exit strategy. And um, I struggled with, am I gonna get out of this? Can I navigate through my feelings? What were some of the feelings you were feeling? Staying crawled up in my bed, hiding from the world, and I could just stay here forever. Um, the things that I would normally do, um, I love music. Um, I can put on a good song, and that song can resonate with whatever feelings I'm dealing with at that time, and I can get through it but it took me more than a year. Um, so I was like, God, this can't be it. But nothing was happening. Um, and oftentimes we don't feel like we need help, but it was, I had to get help. I had to get help. And so um, it was me struggling even with that because I went through several people to get the help that I need or get the breakthrough, get the breakthrough that I needed in order to move past it. And so um, then I had through grief, you go through so many stages and it's hard to explain them. Um, but then I had guilt because I felt like I was mourning my sister more than I mourned my mom because my mom passed away when I was 22. So I didn't know why that was coming up, what was surfacing around that. Um, so that was a hard time and it happened during COVID. Of all things um, to go through, I feel like COVID thrust us into a mindset and behaviors that we weren't ready for. Um, and what I mean by that is our bodies reacting before our minds had a chance to catch up or whatever. And so on top of all those things, making one of the hardest decisions as the older sibling in the family um, to make decisions around her health care and, you know, having to release her or whatever, that was that was probably the hardest thing I've had to go through and not knowing if I was going to come out of it. Because again, the mindset during COVID, couple that with grief, 
but I'm here. I made it. What do you feel like you discovered about yourself going through that experience? That if I can make it through this, <laughs> woo, if I can make it through this, then I am on the front lines of whatever comes after this. I know I can do it. Not with cockiness or arrogance, but the assurance that I will never forget this. You know, we tend to forget when God delivers us from circumstances or give us the victory over things over and over again. But if I can get through this right here, oh my goodness, I got this. Okay. I'm not asking for anything, God. I'm not asking for, <laughs> let's be clear about that. I'm not soliciting or asking for anything. In How, situation. However, however, as I like to say, however, comma, <laughs> yes. um, I am equipped. He has given me the tools. He has given me um, the wherewithal and the assurance that I can get through it. So, yeah. Someone actually mentioned that yesterday that I was talking to. They said that um, when they reflect back on faith, they go back to a memory. They go back to a situation, an experience that they experienced. And they were like, remember when he delivered you out of this one? Mm -hmm. Remember when you got through this one? Mm -hmm. And he consistently does that, right? Right. So for her, it's, going, it's having that point of reference. Right. Going back and saying, I made it through that. Right. I don't know what this is. I may not know what this is. Right. But I know I, I'm going to make it through this one as well. And... Yeah, that's what it, it sounds like. That was a precipice for you to say and to realize that, oh, okay, just that. But sometimes we don't think that we're deserving of getting through it. Is that what you thought? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, because when we don't give God um, the time, that he so willingly deserves or he so rightfully deserves is what I should say. Um, and when I say that real relationship with God, my prayer life was off and I felt guilty because if I didn't pray through the good times when things were up, who am I to go to God when things are falling apart around me and ask for help? And so I, I struggled. Um, I was like, I can't go to God in prayer. I didn't pray when everything was good. The bills was all paid. Money was in the bank and all these things. Maybe I'm supposed to be here. So, yeah. Getting through that. And so for the people that feel that way, because I, I remember feeling that way once. I went through, you said you were in this place for a year. I was in there for three, four years, Angel. And it was nothing, it, there was nothing major happening. It was just that I felt like, like you said, I have been to church in like so many years. I haven't really prayed in so many years. I haven't even cracked my Bible in so many years. So now that I'm going through this, oh, this is what, what I meant to go through. This is my recompense mm -hmm. for not putting my time in exactly. back then. Right. Yes. So you understand. Yeah. How many of us are, are walking through that or having those thoughts and feelings and not communicating or understanding? And that's a lie. I was talking to someone yesterday and they said, just based on the type of conversations that she has, she got to a point where she was like, God, you suck. Ooh. And I was just like, Ooh, I never said that. You said that to God? <laughs> and she was like, oh yeah, I talked to him like he's my man. So if I'm mad at you, you're going to know. And sometimes that's all he wants. He just wants you to say, oh, you suck today. And he was like, okay, that's all I needed to hear. Boom. I like so that. you're talking, you, you know, 
thinking about like a thought shift, Mm -hmm. like imagine. And that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to be intimate with him. He wants, he already knows your thoughts. So you're just, you're just saying them out loud at this point because he already knows. Right. That's how you feel. Right. So, wow. But I've never, I've never been angry at God. I don't believe. I don't ever, I can't remember a time where. I was angry at God because I believe everything happens for a reason. And that may sound cliche, but that's real. And so he allows things to happen for whatever reason or purpose that he has given us. So I've never felt angry. Um, I just felt like I wasn't worthy of his time or his blessings or whatever it is that he has for me. I'm here for a reason. Um, and, and I knew it, like, we know when we're screwing up before anybody else does. We know when you're not putting that time in. We know when you haven't, like, you cracked your Bible. Mm-hmm. You know those. Mm-hmm. You know all Absolutely. of those things. Absolutely, because those are the first things that pop up when right. when you're in that situation. Right, yeah. right. But if but I can pray the word right back to him as he wants us to. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the word. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know I'm supposed to tithe. I know I'm supposed to fellowship. I know all those things. But do we always do the things that we're supposed to? No. And so when it comes to to a place where, um you need and we need him every day but when things get rough and we feel like we don't need him and we set him aside that's what was happening yeah this is so good oh wow and so for you so so now now how do you feel about it Um, I feel, especially where I am right now, I feel like, um, God will put you in a place where you have to need him. He will put you in circumstances where you have to give him the praise and the glory. He will, but at the same time, he gives you those little winks that, Hey, I'm still here. Or I know you're going through this and I'm going to send you this. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's those things that soften my heart. Hey, I still love you. And all right, God, from this moment forward, here I am. I'm showing up. I'm praying, being intimate, you know, doing the things that I know that I'm supposed to do. So, it, yeah, little taps on the shoulders, those little winks. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. Uh, I, I mentioned this yesterday, but the that relationship piece, because I, I grew up in a church. My parents took me to church. We were there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Friday revival, all of that, right? But I was just going through the motions. I was doing what was expected, right? I didn't have the relationship, which is why I was able to go through years without crapping my Bible, without praying, mm-hmm. without going to church. I was like, well, you know, church is just, you're just going through the logistics of it. That's what I told myself. Mm. Mm. I don't really need church. I mean, I can, I can pray in fellowship by myself. You can, but you're not even doing that. Mm. No car worship. <laughs> no car worshiping. Nope. I was listening to that ratchet music. Oh yeah. I was, I was, yeah. All, all in to the heathenism. I was all up in it. And so, therefore, when things got rough, I was like, yeah, I don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. I don't deserve to pray now because he ain't going to listen to me. Right. Absolutely not. That's the trick of the enemy. Mm-hmm. Kill, steal, destroy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, and so then it tied back into my purpose because I was like, that was always a question for me. And because I wasn't rooted and grounded in my faith, I couldn't get there. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't discover it. I couldn't tap into it. And so went years, the same cycle. Well, what is my purpose? Eh, I ain't got time to figure it out. What is my purpose? Oh, it's too hard. What is my purpose? Eh, I don't know. Maybe I don't have one. Everybody said, everybody has purpose. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I know that now. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah. Hmm. You found it. I did. Look where we are now. 
<laughs> yes. Look at us. Okay. Um, so how does your faith allow you to walk in your purpose? Um, so I have three P's, four P's, passion, purpose, progress, people. Okay. And yes, passion, you have passion mm -hmm. to do something. Mm -hmm. People, um, purpose, progress. Did I say those? I said them out of order. Okay. Um, but the four P's. Yeah. And so what allows me to um, make sure that I stay within that purpose and my faith tied to that um, is going after my goals. And one way that I do that, I make a list of things to do. And then I prioritize. I never prioritize and list at the same time. List them first, then prioritize. And then I take those things and I create tasks mm -hmm. in order for me to achieve them. Uh, believing that I can do those things. Like right now, opening my own brokerage, I am crazy enough to believe. Like, girl, you are, I am crazy. Why is it crazy? Impossible is what he does. Right. I am crazy enough to believe that I can compete with the best of them, the big ones, mm -hmm. um, that I can bring the tools, the resources, and the people together um, because they are passionate mm -hmm. about real estate and it's going to progress the people forward. And we're going to be one of the most successful in West Midtown. I'm the only one there. I have no choice but to be successful. <laughs> Right. That's it. It's you. It, it's me. It's you. It's all me. Yes. Yes. It is. Yes. So, um, so that is how I tie my purpose to my faith, um, knowing and believing. Because if anybody had told me October last year that I'd be sitting here in this moment, and when I say sit, not literally sitting here, but sitting in this moment of my life where I am launching a new brokerage and, um, and putting all these resources and tools together for these agents because I've listened to what they need in order for them to be successful, that I would be the one doing it. Oh, no, I tried to pawn this off on somebody else. I did. I was just like, let me be acquired by one of the big ones who have all the things. And I could just be in management. Right. God said no. No. I so, need you to have it because somebody needs it from you. Right. Even though... It may seem like everybody else is doing it, but somebody needs to hear, hear that message from you. Right. Somebody's not going to pay attention until they hear it from you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And those are the things that he said. Um, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Lord, come on, let's go. <laughs> you got to go first, sir. Right. Because, uh, yeah, no. Mm -mm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's amazing in the moment where um, I had to come up with a name for the brokerage. And the name that I had chosen, um, somebody had already taken it or already had it. And so I was kind of like, and in the moment where the franchise kind of unraveled, mm -hmm. um, I said, I can't go into this weekend. And it was on Good Friday. Matter of fact, it happened on Good Friday. And um, I said, I can't go in the weekend without a name. And so I was talking with my marketing person and she said, well, what about using your name? And I was like, oh, that's so corny. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to use. No, I already have a team, Angel Credit and Associates. I don't want the brokerage to be that. If I, if I had anything to do with it, nobody would even know that it was me because that's what I said. God, I don't want nobody to know it's me. And so she said, well, what is your address? And my address is 1465. Mm -hmm. And she said, 14. She said, do you know what the angel number 14 means? And I was like, no. So, um, and I said, 14. She said, well, 14th. I said, 14th Street is major in Atlanta. And she said, we don't have to use the name angel, but looking up the angel number 14, it means resilience. It is accomplishing things in the midst of chaos. Um, and there was this whole laundry list of what, and I, I believe in angel numbers. Um, and that's when she said, well, 14th. And if we look at the list of words that you chose that you wanted to be a part of the name, one of my words was Lux. And she said, well, what about 14th and Lux? And I said, 
feels good. Mm. And so, and then it reminded me of everybody who goes to New York, they always use coordinates, like yeah. 51st and something. Right, right. And I was it's like, a specific destination. Yes. I said, we've arrived. And that is how 14th and Lux Realty came. It actually sounds real sexy. I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. God did good. He sure did. God did good. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I once heard a message, actually it was not too long ago. It was actually at the beginning part of this year. And um, we actually had a visiting pastor. And you know, church people, sometimes we got to do better, y'all. And the reason why I say we got to do better is when you go to service and then you see that pastor is not preaching, you're just like, oh man, this is not going to be. Ooh, oh, you just gosh. say I, I was, I, I, I'm guilty of doing that, right? So we had a visiting pastor that day and I was like, oh, okay, great. All right. The message, he said, he was, you know, doing his nine to five. He went to work, he got fired. He comes home, he has the, the fired box, the termination box in his hand. And his neighbor was like, came outside and he was like, did you get fired today? And he was like, just tell the whole neighborhood that I got fired today. Wow. And he was like, come here, let me pray for you. And he was like, that's the last thing I want you to do. Could you just leave me alone? Mm. But something told him, be obedient. Mm. So he went into his neighbor's house. His neighbor prayed for him. And he said, what do you want to do? And he was like, well, I always thought about writing and being a journalist, but there's no way I can do that. He was like, why not? And he was like, okay. And he was like, you know what I want you to do? I want you to go home and write. He's like, who am I writing to? Don't care. Just go home and write. He went home, he started writing. Next thing you know, he's being placed in rooms that he never thought he would be. He interviewed Dr. Fossey, the Duck Dynasty, ex-presidents, first ladies. He has been all over the world. And he was like, y'all, when you walk into act two and act two seems impossible, that's because he gave it to you. Right. Don't think about how is this gonna happen? How, how, that's not for you to, that's not for you to figure out. So when you're walking into this act two, this mm -hmm. owning your own brokerage, mm -hmm. Know that it's not up to you right now. I have fully accepted that. Um, and I, again, I'm crazy enough to believe that um, God will give you the desires of your heart. And beyond that, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God can do to those, for those who love and are called, called according to his purpose. And so our wildest dream, our wild, we can't even imagine the greatness and the fullness of what God is going to do. So I am, I'm good. I'm good with not knowing. I'm good with the lights being out in the faith room and I can't see anything. I'm good with walking through and knowing that God has already opened up the doors, the angels have gone before me and all that is about to happen. And um, success will be the only outcome. Yeah, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Well, um, thank you for sharing your, thank you for being vulnerable today um, and sharing your journey, especially Grief is so hard and we have a tendency to take grief and just, we want to bottle it up. We don't, we don't want to let people know that we're going through something. And um, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that grief with us today. Um, I say that inside the bubble, uh, just a little, little nugget. Why the name inside the bubble? Because when you come inside the bubble, it's the safe place. Thank you. It's the place that's going to allow you to be vulnerable be courageous, be raw. And it's a safe place. It's a safe zone. So thank you for coming inside the bubble today. For me and creating the safe zone. Yes. I do have something for you though. Mm -hmm. um, we are now going into our segment called Off the Dome. Oh. 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> You're like, uh, I don't know. Something else? Writing. Yes, yes. Okay. And um, so what I'm going to do is you're going to pick a card. Oh. I'm going to read the question. Oof. And you have 60 seconds. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm Oof, depression. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I say, you don't pick the question. The question picks you. Mm. So let's see what you got. If you could make a movie about your life, and you know as dramatic as you are, who would play your character, and what would be the title, and share with me the synopsis. Um, Angela Bassett. You. Okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, okay, it's okay. the quiver of the lips, right? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Kiki Palmer's impersonation of Angela? Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, Angela Bassett. Yes. What would be the title? Walking in the footsteps of an angel. Mm-hmm. That's where my name just became cool. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Walking in the footsteps of an angel. Straight off the dome. That's it. No, Tyler no, Perry. No. Look, Listen. Tyler Perry. Don't take my don't take my title. <laughs> you heard it here. Okay. We're done. We're done. We don't we don't even need to know. Like, that's it. That's it. We're done. Oh my god. That was good. That was good. Okay. For coming. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for being inside the bubble. I so appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed our show today. Keep the conversation going. Leave a comment and share with your friends. We would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, there's purpose in your story.